I'm excited to share with you some tips for building great Adobe Express add-ons using our Adobe Design Resources. To introduce myself a little bit, I'm Steph Corrales. I'm an experienced designer designing the future of Adobe extensibility, one developer experience at a time. So I really focus on what you see when you are building add-ons. So I would love any feedback, um, but some tri tricks for you as you're building. First, I'll talk about what Adobe Design Resources are available to you. So an introduction to what Spectrum is, as well as the add-on UX guidelines that we have available in the documentation. And then I'll get into the meat and potatoes of the workshop, uh, which is design principles and using them for your add-ons. So the Adobe Design Resources that are available to you first is Spectrum, which is the main topic of our workshop today. Spectrum is Adobe's design system, and it provides components and tools that you can use to make your process more efficient. So it makes it easy and efficient for you to follow design principles by using these ready-made component libraries that will inherit updates and remain aligned with Express. And the reason that's important is that add-ons that are consistent with the look and feel of Express take advantage of the user's expectations of how Express works. So it's easier for them to adopt your add-on. And if it's easier for them to adopt your add-on, they'll use it more, which is great for you. Spectrum also provides guidance on tone and voice, inclusive design, writing for errors, and a lot of other great guides for making a great um, experience. So as you dive deeper into what Spectrum has available, you'll find a lot of these resources as well. And when you utilizing Spectrum, it's important to note that you're using the Express theme, which allows your add-ons to feel like the native Express experience. So by using Spectrum CSS or Spectrum Web Components with the Express theme, you'll be in, able to inherit all of the updates from Spectrum. And Holly will dive deep into this. Um, and the reason it's important to use Spectrum is that Spectrum 2 is coming later this year. So if you want to make it really easy for you to inherit those updates, um, we highly recommend implementing Spectrum. The second design resource that we have available are the add-on UX guidelines. And you'll find these in the documentation. And they really outline how to use Spectrum components in common add-on experiences and it'll help you align the design of your add-on with the Adobe Express brand and create this unified experience for end users. So now that I've introduced those resources, I'll talk a little bit more about design principles at a high level and how you can apply those when you're using Spectrum to build your add-ons. So at a basic level, design principles outline different ways that we can guide the user's attention to make it easy for users to understand what to do. And that's the main key is how do we guide their attention? And the benefit of following design principles to help our users is increased usability, which can drive engagement. And that's the main goal of our add-ons. I'm going to highlight just three principles. There are a lot of other design principles, but I'm focusing on hierarchy, emphasis, and balance. And when designing your add-on, hierarchy helps you answer the question, where should it be? Where should this component be? Where should it, this information be? Um, emphasis helps you determine how different should it look? And balance helps you determine how much space does it take? How much space does it need? Um, what size should it be and how much white space does it need around it? Diving a little deeper into hierarchy, this refers to the organization and presentation of information based on its importance. And this helps users understand key features or actions and it enhances the overall experience because it makes it structured and intuitive when they're trying to navigate in your app. So in this example, the first thing the user sees is this back button, which helps them understand how to navigate through the experience. And the order in which the information is presented is intuitive and gives the user clarity. So I can see the title of the podcast. I can see when it was published and I can see how long it is. When thinking about add-ons, 
Um, in general, hierarchy is established in the order that a user reads. So here in the US, we read from top to bottom and left to right. So anything that's towards the top and towards the left will be the first thing that they see. Um, and some tips for using components, organizational components like tabs and accordions create hierarchy within groups of content or information. Anything that's urgent or pertinent can be prioritized with inline alerts or banners, which add hierarchy. And then scroll behavior can also be used to create hierarchy. So these sticky headers maintain the visibility of important information. And you can also use sticky footers if you have important actions that you want to be visible throughout the experience of your add-on. Um, and then a little extra tip is that you should consider the user intent and functionality when determining how much hierarchy a component needs. So for example, if the user's intent is to search within both tabs, both the photos and library tabs, then the search bar should go above it so that the user understands that they're searching anything underneath it. But if the user intent is to search only within the photos tab, then the search bar should be nested underneath it. And that's how you can start to make those decisions of hierarchy. The next part, emphasis, is how different should it look? And this refers to visual distinction or contrast between elements to make them stand out. And you can do this with size of elements, with the color, with um, text. So in this example, you can see that the size of the text and the contrast between the white color of the text and the dark background emphasizes the title. So not only is it high in hierarchy, it's also further emphasized by this contrast. And then when we look at these buttons, the different colors of the buttons makes it easy to distinguish between them and understand the suggested next step. So because this button is solid, it has more visual weight, it's emphasized more, so we know that this is the primary action. Subscribe is a similar size, but it's more subdued, so it's a little bit less emphasized. And when thinking about add-ons, um, you can use variations in visual attributes like color, size, and contrast to make important information stand out. So with colors, you can use accent, primary, and secondary colors to create different levels of emphasis. And you can use typography as well um, with font sizes and different font weights. So here, the instructions are the largest and heaviest font size and weight. Meanwhile, the description text and labels are the smallest. Um, <clears throat> and the accent color here is used to show the active selection. And they did not also use the accent color in the button, so this helps you avoid confusion. Um, because if too many elements are emphasized, then they all lose emphasis because they're no longer different from each other. So here, this example shows you that it's important to avoid excessive use of accent colors um, because it's just very visually noisy, the user is not going to know what to do next. And then similarly, avoid excessive use of bold text. So if everything is bold, it's hard to understand what is actually important here. <clears throat> Finally, balance is how we bring a little bit of space to hierarchy and emphasis. So balance helps us distribute visual elements and content strategically to create a harmonious and aesthetically pleasing layout with enough white space. And white space is really important. Um, you achieve that with margins and padding to provide breathing room, which enhances legibility. Um, and a general example of this is one large image can balance out this bottom half of a lot of smaller buttons. So this creates harmony in the design. And here, the app maintains enough white space at the bottom so it doesn't feel crowded, even though there's a lot of information and a lot of buttons. And the last piece of balance is also symmetry. So you can see the symmetry of the buttons here allows the emphasis of the middle button to really stand out. And when thinking about add-ons, um, in our UX guidelines, we have suggested sizes, margins, and padding to help you maintain enough white space while maximizing the limited space of the panel. And a few tips around balance are proximity helps users understand related content. So here, <clears throat> um, within the style section, there's less padding between um, 
style and the the uh, controls underneath it and style and the other input fields above it. Um, other pieces of balance are avoiding excessive variation in margins. You want to have consistent margins and um, consistent widths for your components um, and containers. And a few final tips before I hand it off to Holly. You want to keep it simple. Keep your features focused and straightforward. If you need to add instructions, they should be clear and concise. The goal is for the UI to really indicate what the user is supposed to do without having to explain too much. And finally, be really consistent and use express theming as much as possible. So overall, please use Spectrum design principles and UX guidelines so that you can make a really great add-on UI. Thank you.